Hi, and thanks again for joining me on another episode of Sealed for Good. This week we're going to talk about underfloor heating because the underfloor heating market is becoming a more popular one globally and the statistics state that radiant heating from underflooring is going to become more and more effective in homes and buildings and we're going to see it more. So where does that challenge the waterproofer for internal applications? Well, for wet areas, which is probably still one of the most common places where people use underfloor heating because of the cost. They start with the bathrooms to avoid those cold mornings on a cold tiled floor. Is what needs to be considered with the, with the underfloor heating, what you need to know about it. Now, there are a number of different underfloor heating systems, well, under tile heating systems, I should say, that are on the market, and they vary slightly in application. So you need to understand how they are fixed and potentially the impact they could have on the membrane and how they best work. And I've seen this before where some, you know, obviously, screes go in bathrooms and some of these underfloor heating systems need to go on top of the membrane uh, if, because potentially when you put them under a membrane, the membrane can act as a bit of an insulative layer and that means you don't get the effectiveness of the underfloor heating. So understand that with your client and if you, especially if you're going to um, have a system where you are putting the membrane on top of the screed, you need to have a rethink and a discussion and a consult with whoever is putting the underfloor heating system in because you don't want people accusing you later of causing an issue with the underfloor heating efficiency. More importantly though, if it's going over the membrane, which is normally what happens, these days there are some good systems with, that are non-abrasive, but make sure that these underfloor heating systems are not going to be pinned down or stapled down um, and if they are going to be adhered down, which not only they are the tape down or use an adhesive, make sure the adhesive is compatible with your membrane. Okay, you don't want a situation where you use a specific type of adhesive if it's a non-cement based one and it's not compatible with the membrane because then it could actually impact the membrane, the performance of it, and then we know you've got a, a, a quality issue and a concern in the most critical area which is your bathroom or your wet area. So be certain of that. The other question that came to me a couple of weeks ago when we were discussing this with a few applicators is should you go with a sheet membrane versus a liquid membrane for underfloor heating? Um, there's this, heat, this, this thought about heating, underfloor heating, how hot it gets. It's not like putting a heat gun on a membrane and softens it and melts it. So a sheet membrane is probably going to be more tolerant to the heating of the underfloor system. However, I've never experienced any of our liquid membranes in the grip set range actually breaking down to any heating elements that are used for underfloor heating when they're sitting on top. They don't get to really high temperatures, they just give a bit of warmth into the, to the topping and the tile bed and that transfers through. So the risk is very low, but if in doubt, check. For those of you who use grip set membranes, you can rest assured that the heat from those underfloor heating uh, systems are not going to affect it. So we can uh, confirm that for you. And in terms of the most smartest thing that the waterproofer can do for the underfloor heating system guys, if it's not the same person, is leave some instructions for them. You know, we've got our attention cards that we have, that we give to our applicators with your phone number, our phone number from tech services, you can put your number on there, and a few lines about what they need to be aware of before they go and put any flooring over the top of your membrane. Be certain about that one. It is don't underestimate the importance of leaving some instruction. At least you've covered yourself to ensure the after trade knows exactly what you want or engage your supervisor, the building supervisor or your client to tell that contractor to give you a call if you want so you can be certain they don't damage that membrane. Particularly in, in a situation where it could be a commercial area where you might have flood tested. You want to make sure that's signed off, it's all done and you're going to have no issues from there. As I said earlier guys, this is the one that's becoming more and more prevalent in the industry. It's going to become more popular, you're going to see more of it. So, ensure you know exactly what your responsibilities are and work with those after trades. It's always important that we work together out there and make it happen. Until next time, I'll see you on the seal for good.